Chaksu un militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri makti bhakti vedanta swami tinamini namaste saraswati deve gorvani pacharine nirvasesa sunyavari pasyatyare sitarine panchakalpa taru vischa kripa sindhuve bhacha patitanam bhavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo Namaha, Namaha. Jai Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithyananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama 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 R
So with the uh, Christmas uh, book marathon on the uh, next agenda of the ISKCON Society, temples around the world are gearing up for a big book marathon. So I was asked to uh, speak on a little bit about book distribution and the importance of uh, distributing books. <laughs> I'll read a few statements from His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, just to give a little uh, introduction to the topic. Uh, this book selling is the real preaching of our culture, especially when you sell Chaitanya Charitamrita and Srimad Bhagavatam. They will understand what we mean by reading these books so you organize freely. Prabhupada is giving, he said, this is the real preaching. And Prabhupada in other places has said that the, our book distribution is the foundation for which we build all of our preaching upon. So out of all the ways that we reach out to the conditioned souls, book distribution is foremost and it's foundational in building our culture and at the same time inspiring people to read and understand this philosophy. Another statement by Prabhupada, the only hope is that you distribute books as much as possible, all of Europe, all America. It will come someday that people will realize what valuable books we have left for the study of the whole world, that they will come. In other words, someday people will start to realize, and it's starting to happen more so, that what's in these books is what they're looking for, in the sense that it can makes the difference between what is success in life and what is simply a struggle to live. Um, another statement by Srila Prabhupada, there is no doubt it, to it, dis to distribute books is our most important activity. The temple is not a place for eating and sleeping, but a base by which we send out our soldiers to fight with Maya. Fight with Maya means to drop thousands and millions of books into the laps of the conditioned souls. Just like during the war time, the bombs are raining from the sky like anything. <laughs> and one more. The more we distribute books and literature, the more we become understood by the people about our mission. And the more they understand our mission, they become advanced on the path of liberation from all problems of life. And Prabhupada goes on to say, my thanks to all of you. He's thanking all the book distributors and those who support book distribution. Because as Srila Prabhupada has often said, my spiritual master gave me that instruction personally. He said, if when you ever get money, print books, print books and distribute books. He says these books, he uses the word, are like time bombs. A time bomb is a bomb that has a certain time on it that when it goes off. So sometimes people will get a book and uh, it won't have much effect on them at that time they receive it. But it's if they keep it or if they somehow or other just put it on their table, you find that after some time they read it and something changes in their life. So these books are, and we have testimony from, I mean, thousands and thousands of devotees who are in this movement, that it's because I received a book, I became a devotee. Yeah. So this is one of the primary activities of our Krishna consciousness is because this knowledge cannot be surpassed. There's, there's no knowledge anywhere in the three worlds that's within these transcendental books that are given to us by Srila Prabhupada. As Prabhupada said, these books are not written by me, they are Krishna's words. And Krishna is telling me what to write and I put it on paper. So these are the words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So how valuable is that? You can't imagine how rare and how valuable that is to hear the words of the Supreme Lord in the form of these transcendental books. 
So it's a time of the year when devotees um, are more or less focused on this activity. But there's not enough devotees to do the work. I was just with some of the devotees just a few minutes ago and there's a whole team right now that just left the temple just a few minutes ago and they're on their way for book distribution. They'll be back next weekend. We'll be gone for five days. So the many devotees are sacrificing their whole time, energy, and life to distribute these books to the conditioned souls. Because... <clears throat> As Prabhupada writes, in other places, if they read one word or if they understand something, then their life is changed and they're on their way back to Krishna. It's just a matter of time before they reach. And so these books are so valuable. And you'll see how much time and energy and uh, importance Prabhupada gave to writing these books when Prabhupada was, when everyone else was sleeping, Prabhupada would rise around midnight, 12.30 in the evening, and he would begin his Bhaktivedanta purports, reading the, the commentaries from the other acharyas, and giving his own added commentary to help understand from the Western point of view. He added, he's always thinking how the, how the Western mind thinks and let me present this knowledge for their understanding. That was Prabhupada's uh, contribution to the world, these transcendental books, especially his Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the essence of all transcendental literature. And so uh, we have a great legacy, and that legacy is that we want to please Srila Prabhupada and the previous Acharyas, and especially to Lord Sri Krishna, by somehow or other getting involved in one form or another and distributing these books. Last year during the lockdown, which happened in the beginning of 2020, devotees in different places around the world were thinking, how can we continue with book distribution? despite the fact that they were locked down, but they came up with many programs of um, contacting people through the media and getting people to accept books and then delivering them by post office to, to devotees. There was one devotee, he, his whole job, all he did all day was carry boxes of books to the post office the whole day. <laughs> Now, he was doing like 2,000 boxes of books a day just to the post office. And so the devotees really became what we say very uh, intelligent in thinking of how to distribute books. And there's so many ways. Maybe some of us can't go out on the streets for whatever reason, but we can always see that there are opportunities in different areas where we can think about how we can distribute books through the mail, through the media. We have programs for putting books into hotels. This is one of the programs that was devised in America. Just like you, I don't know if it's so common in your country here, but in America, every hotel has a Bible. <laughs> if you go into the hotel, you can see it's called the Gideon's Bible. <laughs> So um, we got the idea from them, and we also contacted many hotel owners, and they agreed to put the Bhagavad Gita in the hotels. <laughs> so we had thousands and thousands of hotels who agreed to accept our Bhagavad Gita, free of charge. And people would come, get a room, and then they have a choice between reading the Bible or... <laughs> they probably read the Bible so many times, so they probably picked up the Hare Krishna Bhagavad Gita. So that was uh, one of the ways that we did books. We also created vending machines, just like you go to a vending machine, you put your coins in it, you pull a lever and you get a package of potato chips or some chocolate bar or something. We, did, we set up vending machines with books. And you can see the book and you put your coin in, you pull a lever and you get it back to God. And I mean, science of self-realization coming back, you know, beyond birth and death. So uh, devotees were always thinking how to distribute more and more books. 
So this, as Prabhupada said, rain, rain that just delivered these books like bombs. There's one story where this was in India when the devotees were doing a book distribution during one Christmas marathon, and they were in the train station in Bombay. And so there was one man, he was walking along, and so one book distributor stopped him and tried to sell him a book. The man was not interested, so he just continued to walk on. But after walking a little bit further, he met another book distributor. <laughs> and this one, he, he tried to, he said, no, no, I just saw one. So then he left, and then he went on, and then there was another one approached him the third time. He said, this must be God's arrangement, all right, so. <laughs> He bought a book. <laughs> Three times within 15 minutes he gets approached. You know? <laughs> so yeah, so that's how the devotees were. And there was one girl in Bombay, uh, her name was uh, uh, Radharani. She distributed 2,000, no, 12,000 books in one day. 12,000 in one day. <laughs> she went into a factory speak to the manager and he agreed to give every one of his employees a Bhagavad Gita. She did 12,000 Bhagavad Gitas in one day. <laughs> she won the marathon. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's, there's only, you can also do that, go into stores and you can ask the devotees or the people who run the stores if you can put books on their counter and people can come and give a donation and get a book, a small book. Or you can go into factories and offices and also encourage people to take books. So there's so many uh, opportunities to distribute books. Wherever there's people, there's an opportunity. So this is a great service to the spiritual master and to the world. And we see there have been so many miraculous and amazing incidents in the lives of the devotees on how people have taken their book, these books, and their whole life has changed. Some became devotees and, and some just became very, very, very Krishna consciousness by reading Srila Prabhupada's books. So right now, the world situation is quite, uh, what's the word, uh, uncertain. People are lost right now more than ever. The news media has created such fear in the hearts and minds of others and restrictions on all levels are coming and people are starting to look and seeing that their, their, nor, their normal way of life is being pulled up out from under them. They're not allowed to buy things, they're not allowed to go into stores, a, their children can't go to school. There's a lot of things that are changing, so people are actually questioning and more people are turning to God now. I can see that in my own experience. Um, and they're looking for answers to how to somehow or other get through this situation and uh, somehow live life in a normal way. But we have some, we have the answers. And so many of the book distributors who have been active in the last year or so, all are saying the same thing. The books are going out faster than ever. <laughs> and we have our uh, uh, Uddhava Mitra there. We were, I was with him just one day. He did 200 books in one day. We were just, just doing Harinams in different places. And every time I looked around, he was talking to somebody. <laughs> You're translating that. I, okay. <laughs> You can use another name if you want. <laughs> but he's amazing. You watch him on book distribution, he's like, you know, he's like, he just pulls, grabs the people and goes, and then there they are. So they, when he's so big, they can't, they get scared, so they take the book. <laughs> no, not really, no. <laughs> he smiles a lot, and they love, <laughs> and they love that, so... <laughs> So yeah, he's, he has this real heart for book distribution, and that's, that's the heart of Srila Prabhupada's movement. And as Prabhupada said, if we, if we preach Krishna consciousness, especially through book distribution, Krishna becomes so 
satisfied that you get recognized by Krishna. And if you get recognized by Krishna, your life in Krishna consciousness is guaranteed success. <laughs> So this is a great opportunity to uh, do some great service in the, in the most needy time, I think. We don't know how things will play out on the social, political, and economic adventures, how things will affect Krishna consciousness. But we know one thing, that devotees are always taking shelter of Krishna, reading Srila Prabhupada's books, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and trying to bring more people away from this uh, struggle to live in this material world, especially during these more difficult times. So uh, it's a great, it's a great opportunity to uh, to do good to people in general. As Prabhupada said, our movement is called paropaka. Paropaka means to do good to others. He says that is the men that is the that is the basic of human life. The human life means to do good to others. So there's no better way to help another person than to give them transcendental knowledge. If you feed someone that's nice, who's hungry, if you give people cloth, clothing when they're needy, that is also good. There are many ways to do welfare work to people in general, but if you give them knowledge, then they have the solutions to all their problems. Because transcendental knowledge will save a person from suffering. If when they simply accept this knowledge and apply it in their life, they can rise above all the difficulties. Just like we as devotees, we are not affected by the, uh, the uh, material energy because we are situated nicely under the shelter of Krishna and especially chanting his holy name. But people are not. But people in general are just, you know, they don't know what will happen next, and therefore many of them are in a lot of anxiety and fear. So they're looking, they're looking for solutions. So we have an opportunity to do something wonderful for people in general and for the Krishna for spreading Krishna consciousness. So I would encourage each and every devotee to think how they can connect with book distribution through this marathon in one form or another, either through, through, the, through the media or going out on the streets or just figure, figuring ways to... One of the ways you can do is just carry books wherever you go. If you're going shopping, if you're going to meet some people, just carry some small books with you. And then if you meet somebody and you can talk to them and. You can give them a book. You can hand them a book like that. So we have uh, we have so many programs that are in effect, and we can also develop more for distributing books. And Prabhupada, during the during the time of Srila Prabhupada in 1973, Prabhupada, the book distribution started to really start to develop. And Prabhupada was encouraging the devotees to continue to increase more and more. And then at one time, he said, and after the end of 1973, he said, okay, I have the, you've given me the scores for this year. Now next year you should double it. <laughs> he told the devotees. And, and so they did. They doubled the scores from 73 to 74. And at the end of 74, Prabhupada said, double it again. <laughs> And he did, and then by 76 he said double it again. And pretty soon, and the, all the temples were, they had, during the marathon, even during the year, just a few people back at the temples, and the rest were out distributing books. So we flooded the United States with books. <laughs> There's books everywhere, in libraries, in, in hospitals, in various types of places. So um, any institution is always interested in books. We were doing some jail preaching, and when we went to jails, we were also distributing books to jails. We had a program. We would call the librarians and ask them to take a set of Prabhupada's books, and if they said yes, we'd send them one of every copy. Sometimes we'd send them 30 or 40 books, and then their libraries would be full. There was one story where one person in jail, he was looking for a book to read, 
And so he thought, I'm going to read a Western book, you know, because in America they got the cowboys and Indians. I don't know if you know all about that stuff, but anyway. <laughs> so he's looking for a nice adventure book. So he sees one book that's got the cover of uh, cowboys and Indians, and he picks it up, but it was a Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> With a different cover on it. <laughs> so he was thinking, what is this? And then he started reading it, and then he couldn't stop reading it. <laughs> And eventually he he started to, to write and then he was getting regular books while he was in jail. So we're also distributing a lot of books in the jails. This is one place we I have a lot of success because we because every jail has a library and libraries are always interested in increasing their variety of books. So um I encourage every each and every one of you and if there is something I should mention. If you go out on the streets and you distribute books, when you start seeing how people are taking the books, there is no greater pleasure than that. When you see people taking the books, your, your happiness just goes sky high. And you think, I'm not going to do anything else. This is the best. <laughs> Let me just keep distributing books. It's a take, right, right, Kalindi? Yeah, she's, she's good. I was out with her. I was watching. She knocks on people's door, and they come to the door. She's so sweet and gentle here, but when she's out on book distribution, she's like a lioness, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she's just like she doesn't take no, you know. <laughs> so we want to do. We want that. We want more and more devotees to get involved with book distribution. If the whole world gets involved with book distribution, all the devotees, you can imagine how the whole face of the world will change. Because these books are powerful. And Prabhupada has given so much importance to reading and to uh, distributing these books. And Prabhupada would read his own books too. An author usually writes a book and after they're done, everybody else reads, right? <laughs> but Prabhupada would read his own books and sometimes he would come to places where he would read Krishna's pastimes. And he would start laughing, you know, some of the more humorous pastimes of Krishna. And then the devotees would be looking at Prabhupada. Prabhupada's laughing, reading his own books, you know. <laughs> and Prabhupada would say, Krishna is speaking and I am writing. These are the words of Krishna. <laughs> and so, yeah, the, Prabhupada was the perfect media for transmission of this knowledge. And that became the form of his books and, of course, also his lectures. So we have a great opportunity to do some wonderful service. And it's so satisfying like that. So everyone should think, in what way can I contribute to doing this? And Krishna will help you. As soon as you have the desire and make some arrangements, Krishna will help you and show you how you can be a part of this wonderful marathon. Because we want to do more and more and more um, because this is what's needed most in the world, transcendental knowledge. Transcendental knowledge, as it's explained in the Shastras, is the, is the principle of freedom because when you have knowledge, you're free. <laughs> what is that knowledge? I belong to Krishna, <laughs> not to this material world. I am not this body, I am spirit soul, I am part and parcel of Krishna. My happiness and my livelihood, everything depends on my relationship with Krishna, not my arrangements that I've made in this material world. That is, so we get that assurance by reading Srila Prabhupada's books. And therefore we become fearless. Abhayam, Abhay. Prabhupada's name was A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. A means Abhay. Bhai means fear. Abhai means one who is fearless. So when we become Krishna conscious, we become fearless. Fear, we're not afraid of anything because we know we were, we're with Krishna. And we have what Krishna wants us to do, give the same knowledge to others. And this is the glory of Krishna consciousness. And those who do that, will always be satisfied in Krishna consciousness. There will never be any anxieties. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please uh, try to make plans to go out on book distribution. 
Or think, think of ways that you're in your home or in other ways that you can distribute books. And we have a lot of books. <laughs> no limit on the books. There's never a shortage of books. Okay, so uh, is any comments or questions or additions? Subtractions? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, hvala lipa za uh, inspirativno lekcijo in spodbudo za ta maraton, ki prihaja. Thank you for the inspiring class and uh, encouragement for this maraton, which is coming. Jaz sem uh, uh, pristopila k bhakti jogi zdaj v zadnjem valu, tem koronskem valu in nas je kar nekaj mladih bhakt in zdaj le gremo prvič na teren deliti knjige. I came to Krishna consciousness in this last uh, wave of coronavirus and now is the first time that we are going out with the books mm. S some of us new devotees. Mm. Ali nam lahko prosim poveste nekaj spodbudnega v bistvu ker to je res uh, deliti knjigo sveto ime nam še vedno ni jasno kako to narediti da to vendar ni prodaja in kako v nekaj besedah pristopimo in prosim za blagoslov Can you give me some encouraging words words how to do this um, Krishna that this is not uh, the same and uh, how to to approach to people mm -hmm. remember you and and she's asking for blessings you should remember when you're out there you're not alone you're with Prabhupada you're with Krishna <laughs> they are with you actually so yeah they're with you so you have that confidence that Krishna is with me and I'm doing Krishna's service by distributing these books and Prabhupada is going to will be pleased then that confidence attracts people when people see that you're confident and you're also enjoying what you're doing, they're attracted to you. And then they listen easier. How to approach people? Just be your sweet self, that's all. <laughs> Smile and make them feel comfortable. <laughs> and then speak something. I'm sure whatever you say, they'll listen. <laughs> But always remember, you can always you can always say that we these I've come. Oh, there was one devotee. He's actually one of the biggest book distributors. He would always come up to a person and shake their hand. Hey, how are you? How's the family? And what's going on? You know. <laughs> and then he make a little friendship with them. Maybe that's not your style, but anyway, he he would do that. And then after they would speak a little bit. Then he would say, well, we have these books, and these are ancient books from India, and they give the time-honored understanding of how one can be fully happy in, in life. So, so we speak about being happy, that's one of the things, because nobody's happy. <laughs> speak about how to become happy, that these books will make you happy, they will they give you the knowledge by which you can understand how to become happy. Mm -hmm. They are about God, they are about God's saints, they are about an ancient culture that was very strong more than 5,000 years ago. Yeah. So you can always think of different things to say. But be yourself. Because if you be yourself, that will be the most natural thing. Yeah. And uh, when you're out there, just uh, pray to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, please send me somebody. <laughs> and Prabhupada will send you somebody. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, have confidence when you're out there. And also know that you're giving them something very ra valuable, most valuable, something that they can never get anywhere else, something they're looking for but they don't know it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is that okay? okay? Thank you. Anyone else? Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. Any Uddhava Mitra has question from the audience? Or your question. Uh, thank you very much again. Very nice class. So, if you can give maybe one tip or maybe more, uh, how to raise levels. So there are so many opportunities, but these opportunities comes from Krishna. So what do you suggest? How to? To raise one level, to improve. To improve? Like, you know, everyone has some quota and right. then everyone wants to stretch further. Right. But how to come from that level to next level? Eagerness, <laughs> enthusiasm, eagerness, determination. Uh, sometimes spending more time. <laughs> um, you already have the formula. Now you just have to make it, make it more and more attractive. Um, be very, you know, I think you are, but be personal. When you're personal with people, then they they open up more. <laughs> and instead of giving them one book, two books, say we got ten books here, ten different titles, for a special price of maybe 50 euros, you can have ten books, or something like that. Yeah, you can do packages of books. They do that. You have a whole, you, you wrap them like in a big bow tie, a nice colored ribbon, and you carry them. You show them one book, but then you say, well, we have this special offer here. This is uh, 10 books, and for you, special price, 50 euros. We would usually charge somebody else 70 euros, but you're special, we'll charge you only 50. <laughs> So yeah, I like that. You can do sets at a time. Mm -hmm. And you can also uh, carry uh, Srimad Bhagavatams and get a person to purchase a whole set of Bhagavatams by showing them one Bhagavatam, saying this is a whole set. It'd be nice, beautiful for your library. You'll have the ancient traditional culture of all, all, the, all the great saints that came in, in the history of Vedic culture, which is the oldest culture known to mankind. So we have, yeah, there's so many ways that you can, you know, encourage people to take the books like that. Mm. You can say, hey, it's Christmas time, and you looking for a present for your friends? We got it right here. Your friend will really love this. Not only your friend, your mother, your father, your kids, your relatives, your uncles, your aunts, your grandfather, everybody. Here's a great present for Krishna. Because a lot of time of Krishna, Christmas. You sometimes you <laughs> Krishna's okay. It's a, it's a new holiday. <laughs> so, you know, people sometimes think. You know, what am I going to buy him? I bought him 500 handkerchiefs the last 500 Christmases. I don't know what to buy him this year. All right, and then we come, hey, here's a book. Oh, yeah, this is something different. I like this. So you can encourage people to take the books, to give them to gifts for their friends like that for Christmas. Yeah. That's a good one. 
Yeah, there's many more. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else? Um.